Life is a marathon, and you can't win a marathon without putting a few band-aids on your nipples. Welcome in to the Bro 4 Squad Podcast. This is episode 29 of a bunch of bros talking superheroes, movies, and superhero movies. I am your host, Jeff Hornacek. Let's go around and meet the other bros. In his lab, the mad scientist, Brian Banner. Banner, welcome. Yo, 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 what up with it? Banner, why? One time, just a normal... Hey guys, welcome in. Quit trying to appeal to a different demographic every week. If it's not the Australians, it's the English, and now I don't even know who that was directed to. All right. We now go to our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger. Matt, what's up? We do a lot of theories on this show. This is not a theory at all. This is definitely coming true. If Justice League sucks, I'm going to kill myself. All Back right. to you, Jeff. Heard it here first. A lot of pressure on you now. Uh, hopefully it, it does well at the box office, and if not, keep your... Keep your eyes and ears peeled to the, to the website for any news related to Matt Geiger. All right, guys. Every bro, the most important thing in his life is Chess Day. So that's how we start off every one of our shows with a segment we call Chess Day. And today's topic is that news dropped this past week that the long-speculated about and yet-to-be-named Star Wars anthology movie hitting theaters after Episode Nine will, in fact, be an Obi-Wan anthology film with Ewan McGregor supposedly set to return. Considering many fan opinions that McGregor was one of the few bright spots in the prequel movies, aside from that awesome dialogue that George Lucas wrote, this has the Star Wars community jacked up. Um, we actually found a great question on the internet from Juan Pablo Ferrero, at Bass Weirdo, who wants to know, and then on top of this, I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on this news, but he asks, will Joel Edgerton come back to replies prize his role as Uncle Owen in the Obi-Wan movie. So, Banner, as a massive Star Wars fan, you heard this news. What are your thoughts on this movie announcement? What do you want to see? And then, to Juan Pablo's question, do you think Edgerton will come back as Uncle Owen on Tatooine? So, first off, I need more information. I just, I need this movie way sooner than, what, four years from now? Yeah. I need this movie, like, I, I am more jacked about this movie than I, than I am a Han Solo movie. And I love Han Solo, but I want this because I don't know the Han Solo movie. It, it just it does nothing for me. I'm super excited for it. I and I love Ewan McGregor as well, so that helps. Um, I'm in awe right now. That's really what I am. As far as Joel Edgerton coming back, I mean, I think he will. Why not? How often do you get to be in a Star Wars movie? let alone like once, but let alone twice, 20 years apart, and you get the chance to reprise your role as the same character where that time has actually passed. Yeah. Uh, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I also think it also depends on the storyline that they go with. Is he even going to have the opportunity to reprise his role? Uh, I mean, it makes sense that Obi-Wan has some sort of connection to Uncle Owen and Luke Skywalker. Um, you know, we, we know based on the dialogue that we get in A New Hope that they do have some sort of communication, but what that entails, I don't know. I'm really interested to see uh, if he's in it and who they cast as a young Luke Skywalker as yeah. well. Maybe Owen and Obi-Wan are like drinking buddies. They come over, they have some blue milk, they play some poker, they complain about their wives. I could see something like that. Geiger, when this was announced, uh, I know you and I have, have gone back and forth on the prequels and all the things wrong with them. I'm assuming that you're like most people where you don't think McGregor was a problem. And then what do you want to see in this movie? I know there's a lot of speculation about who the villain could be. McGregor is a fantastic actor. I, <laughs> this is probably not going to be very popular on the pod. I love Star Wars, man. I, I love Star Wars, but I'm a little Star Wars out. Can I just say that without That's fair. You know, pitchforks and burning shit being put on my lawn. I mean, I'm still going to kill you, but that's fair. The, the thing about doing these spin-off movies, i.e. a Han Solo or an Obi-Wan, is basically, you know, like an Iron Man movie or an Aquaman movie to tell us more about the character. These characters are fucking developed. We know about them. This is basically just a cash grab at this point, um, other than The Force Awakens and those, because those actually add on to the story. I'm not really excited for the Han Solo movie. This one, I don't know how old Luke's going to be, if it's just going to be about Obi-Wan changing diapers and then, you know, going to give a Moses with his friends and talking about how being a stay-at-home dad is just as hard as you having kids and also having a 40-hour-a-week job. I don't know what this is going to be about. I don't understand how a villain even takes place in this without, unless it's a Vader-type thing. 
I just don't understand why this story is being made, man. And I, I hate to be the, the sour grapes guy on the podcast, but after a while, you I love get being the sour grapes guy. <laughs> You're right. I do love being the villain, but not on Star Wars. I actually love Star Wars, but I'm getting a little Star Wars out. And I wrote a squad blog. Check it out, broforsquad.com, that this should not be coming out every year. It should be like FIFA. It should be every four years something you look forward to, a Star Wars movie. I'm getting Star Wars out, and they're going to kill the franchise doing this bullshit. That's I actually, all I have to say. I kind of echo a lot of that sentiment. I mean, the episodes to me are awesome because it's like an event film, you know, every other year and it progresses the yeah. the Skywalker story. It's a now, Star Wars Christmas. I used to say that all the time. It's like, it's a Star Wars Christmas this year. We're going to get Star Wars this year. Not having, every fucking Christmas. Having said that, I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth because I loved Rogue One and I personally think it's the best Star Wars movie I've ever seen. Now, also, I'm not excited about the Han Solo movie and I don't think it does anything to progress the storyline i don't think it expands the universe at all and i don't want to see anyone else fucking play han solo besides harrison ford the other thing in banner i want your opinion on this real quick when i saw the list of other possible anthology movies they all sounded awful this one sounded the least worse least worse. this one sounded like the the best of the pack of movies because i saw boba fett jabba the hut yoda i don't want to see any of jabba too like who they treated Jonah Hill to get fat again? Who wants that movie? I mean, Banner, of all those, is are you excited to see this, or is this just the one that you wanted the most out of that shitty list that we saw on the internet? It's definitely the one I wanted the most out of that shitty list. And I, I Geiger, I think I understand where you're coming from with this. Is the episode films advance the story? Jeff, you said you liked Rogue One. It advanced the story. It filled the major plot hole in the story. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to get a Han Solo movie. What does that bring to the table? Oh, this guy that – what makes us love him is his, his mystery. Now that's going away? Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to get another movie on Obi-Wan, which I still love it and I'm still excited. But it's not telling us a new story. It's just like adding something on that we don't necessarily need to know. The, one of the other ones that I, that I saw out there was them making an Ahsoka Tana movie. It's a character that we've never seen live action. She was in uh, the Clone Wars show, and that would be something I'd be excited about because it's very new. It's a it's a new idea. It's not kind of this regurgitating, like you said, cash cow just bleeding the franchise dry. It's bringing some fresh blood into it. I the three things I want to see. One, I'd love to see a Darth Plagueis movie origin story. I'd like to see a Darth Maul prequel with his brother. And the other thing I'd like to see is taking it, and I'm hoping I get this in. Um, the next two actual Star Wars films. I call them Star Wars films. But I want to see a Jedi that trained himself and uses both sides of the Force. He's not a light side. He's not a dark side. He's kind of in the middle and he uses both. And I, I think that needs to... I think they can go further after The Force Awakens with 8 and 9 and do 10, 11, and 12 and do another whole thing with Rey and everything like that before we have to go back and do these stories that really I don't think we give a shit about. And now that we did all that complaining, wait for our reviews for both Han Solo and the next two Star Wars films. Oh, we'll where, see them. Where we absolutely <laughs> yeah, love them. We'll be there at the <laughs> midnight. The yeah, where we I'm very excited to do them. Where we gush about them and see them on opening night and then four other times <laughs> in 3D, as is the Bro 4 Squad tradition. All right, guys, that's our chess day topic as we contradict ourselves at the end, as we always do. The next and most important thing in any bro's life after his chess day is his protein shake to heal up. So that is our second segment of the day is our protein shake topic. And as we're nearing the end of the calendar year and we still have some massive tentpole films on the horizon between Star Wars The Last Jedi, Thor Ragnarok, and Justice League, rumors are starting to fly as critic screenings are approaching for these films. We tend to say fuck the critics on this show, but we have to weigh in anytime they talk shit about something we love. And we found an awesome question on the internet from Vernon Glenn at VL Glenn Jr., Pertaining to Justice League, now there's been a lot of chatter this past week on the internet both about Joss Whedon and some of the controversy around him, and then some of the things that he's been doing in the film supposedly with massive reshoots and changing the ending. The question Vernon asks is, have you heard the rumor that an early cut of Justice League was quote, unwatchable, unquote, only one source for this rumor apparently. Geiger, we'll go to you first. We do hate the critics and we love superhero movies, but what do you think about this one? Sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to say because they hated BVS and I love BVS. However, I've said this at the beginning, I think this movie is going to be terrible. Simply because the average person, 
not us or some of the people that listen to us that know a lot about the comics do not know anything about The Flash, do not know anything about Cyborg, and do not know anything about Aquaman. Honestly, man, I like to be invested in these characters too because I've read the comics and there's a lot of ways you can go with a lot of these different characters. I started watching Game of Thrones because Momoa was in it and he was Aquaman. The only reason I started watching Game of Thrones because I want to know who he is because DC, you haven't given me anything other than his you know, hair shampoo commercial in BBS where he swam up and swam away. That's all you've given me. I have no clue where you're going with any of these characters. So I think this movie was going to be bad even before uh, Snyder had the tragic death to, uh, I believe, his daughter. But you bring in Josh Whedon, who I have no problem with. Great director, has done a bunch of great stuff for Marvel. But the problem is, is their directing styles are two totally different styles. They really are. Now, yeah. if Spielberg... Spielberg's son died and you brought in George Lucas, the movie would be kind of the same because they have two similar directing styles. These guys could not be any farther apart. you got Marvel that has great movies, but they're a little more on the popular side, a little more on the fun side. And you got Snyder that's definitely on the dark side, the gloomy side, and now you're bringing these two together. And if Whedon had any little influence on it at all, the movie is not going to make sense. Now we get rumors that he's totally redoing the ending, which I don't know. I've never seen the ending, so I can't say if that's good or bad. But this movie is going to be Suicide Squad again. I'm telling you right now, it's going to feel out of place because you got a dark and gloomy like Tim Burton director, and then you got a poppy director, and they're trying to make this movie fucking work with four characters. We, we don't even fucking know what they're going to do with them. It's just not going to be we, – we know who Wonder Woman is now. We know what they're doing with Batman. Superman's in the movie. We know what they're doing with him. But Flash, Cyborg, and Aquaman, we have no fucking clue about. Commissioner Gordon, we have no fucking clue about. And then you throw in Steppenwolf, that people are supposed to give a fuck about. This yep. movie's doomed. I'm that, telling you right now, it's not going to be good. That's a great point about their different directing styles. I actually hadn't thought about that. Uh, Banner, what do you think about this and some of the rumors that are out there regarding Justice League? Again, I think a lot of fanboys, especially people who follow us on Twitter see that a lot of the critics, for whatever reason, seem to just not get the style that DC is going for with these films, so they tend to hate some of them irrationally, but uh, I'm curious to see what you think about some of this. I've always said we need all these studios to make great films so that they can keep outdoing each other, and then we're going to continue to get better movies, whether it's Marvel, whether it's DC, and whether it's Fox. Fuck you, Geiger. I know. I said it. No, I agree with you. Competition and, makes everyone better. I and... Agree. Right now, it feels like Marvel is taking a monopoly on the genre because – and I think the critics have a lot to do with that. There are some movies that, that are Marvel movies that are coming out that are getting a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, and then you have a BVS that gets like a 60%. Well, why? Because they're so different. I think that Marvel is so far up their ass, and again, like you said, Jeff, they just don't understand what DC is, is kind of going for. Um, I still don't put that much stock in th what the critics say. BBS, I hated when I saw in theaters. Guy, you've made me watch it three or four times now in the past year or so. I really, really like it now. Um, it, it's kind of like a good scotch. It, it, it's an acquired taste. You need to focus on it, and because it's a little bit more dark. Um, and honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be open there opening night. It's going to get a fuck ton of money in, whether it's yeah. good or bad. So they're going to make it regardless. So, you know, who gives a shit, really? Yeah, to me, a superhero movie is like pizza. Well, even when it's bad, it's fucking good. Now, yeah. I say that, and then people make movies like fucking Catwoman, and I have to sit here and correct myself. But with all this stuff, I think Geiger's point about the directing styles is a little concerning. Anytime you switch directors in the middle of a project, it's tough. Um, I mean... Joss Whedon hasn't really proven me wrong yet. I mean, Age of Ultron, it, it's not a bad movie. It has a lot of flaws, but I don't think narratively it has a lot of issues. So I'm excited to see what he can do maybe with the narrative uh, in, in tandem with Zack Snyder's visual style of directing, which I think we can all agree is just incredible. So I'm not going to believe and what I, the critics say for now, but like Banner said, I'll be there open yet regardless with high hopes. Changing, uh, hoping changing the ending is just the, the biggest question out there right now. What was the ending? What they change it to? That's going to be debated a lot because some people are going to like it, some people are going to hate it. Not everyone's going to like the ending. It's, I'm sure in DC DC fashion, we'll get an extended or some yeah. ultimate cut on DVD that'll have both of them. Sure, we will. See, and that was what I was going to say: is the reshoots don't really bother me. That that doesn't scare yeah. me. Every movie has quote unquote major reshoots. That's such a relative term, but changing the ending 
That's pretty definite. Because it's it's not an ending to a movie. It's an ending to a movie in an extended universe that connects to, we think, 80 other movies, other movies. What, six Shazam movies that they have on the fucking slate? They haven't even cast the actor yet. And in, the only one that's in Greenlit right now is Aquaman. So, I don't know. Warner Brothers is a fucking shit show. I've said this in the beginning. I'm the DC guy. But this movie needs to be on high alert. I'm not looking forward to seeing it. But I'll be there with you guys opening night. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, our last segment of the podcast. Banner, before we get to this, uh, I actually have a really important question for you. Shoot. Do you even lift? Brah. Brah? Brah. Do you even lift that? Brah. You lift? And our third segment is our question answer segment. Do you even lift brah? Where once again we stalk the internet, find some great fan questions, and answer them in rapid fire fashion. Our first question comes to us from A. Clay at A. Clay 19, who says, How would you compare this summer in movies to last summer? Now, Banner and I had an argument on the phone today about when we consider the summer movie season starting or ending. So for the purpose of this, literally just do whatever the fuck you want. It's like being a preschool teacher. Just don't eat the glue and we'll consider today successful. So, Geiger, we'll go to you first. 2017 is a lot of depth, but not a lot of big home run hitters. A lot of singles hitters. 2016 had some big dogs that came to play. How do you evaluate this summer versus last summer? Yeah, I would use two words, depth versus, you know, like you said, big hitters. There's about three or four blockbusters. Now, the summer movie season, if we're going to count, you know, February, March, I think it doesn't really matter because they cancel each other out. We got Deadpool versus Logan. They're yep. both fucking yep. fantastic. And, I mean, you could go one day I'll say Logan, the next day I'll say Deadpool. So you can kind of cancel that out. I, I'm going to go with this year just simply because – it was our first whole summer doing the podcast, so I guess that's not really fair, but we still went to movies last summer when we didn't have the podcast regularly if we wanted to see them. But this one we had to to do reviews, but it seemed like every weekend. That one weekend, it was Spider-Man, Homecoming, Apes, Dunkirk, three weekends in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, you had Guardians of the Galaxy 2 come out. You had Wonder Woman coming out. You had uh, Pirates of the Caribbean coming out, and all these movies were good. All the movies were good. I don't no one blockbuster that I went and saw, not count Transformers, that's shit. We don't count that on this podcast. But one that I actually wanted to go see that I'm just like, man, that wasn't that good. All of them were good. Were any of them blowing me away? No, besides Logan probably was the only one that really blew me away. That I was like, man, that was even better than I thought. But all of them were good. I'll buy all of them when they come out on DVD. So I'm going to pick this summer. This summer was fantastic. Every single weekend had a great movie coming out. Banner. Banner. Yeah, I'm going to pick this year as well. Um, you know, last year we had a few standout movies. This year, if you go month by month, you could go that movie won the month, but this movie has an argument to be better than the movie that won the month. So if you're just going one, two per month and grade it all the way up, there wasn't a bad movie this year really that was in major blockbusters. I know you got like the emoji movie and bullshit like that. And like Geiger oh, said, I got a list. Uh, Don't worry. Trans- <laughs> Transformers. But I mean, even going back for the whole year, I know we, this question says summer. I said summer starts in May. So last year you couldn't count civil war cause it came out in April. You got but... civil war and BVS date switch. Civil war came so, out in May. No, BVS came out yeah, in civil March. War came out on Cinco de Mayo. Cause I remember getting drunk and going and watching it. Either way though. Well then you can't count BVS, which is another <coughs> BVS was in March. <laughs> right. And so was Logan. <clears throat> so, but either way this year you have a bunch of great movies. They just nickel and dime you to death. Whereas last year, if you're a casual movie goer, you're going to go to four movies a year. You've got those four movies right there. All right, here's how I'm going to decide. I put a list of the shittiest movies for each of the two summers together. I'm going to read them to you, and because I'm just a negative person in general, I'm a miserable to be around. You tell me which list is worse, and the other one will win. These are the shittiest movies from the summer of 2016. Tweet at us at Bro4Squad if you want to fight. Suicide Squad, Angry Birds, Neighbors 2, X-Men Apocalypse, sorry Banner, TMNT Out of the Shadows, and Independence Day Regurgence, which I saw on an airplane and wanted the plane to crash. 2017 movies that sucked. Transformers The Last Night, Baywatch, and Valerian City of a Thousand Planets. So, which of those lists are worse? X-Men Apocalypse and Neighbors 2 aren't totally shitty movies. Like, they're watchable. 
I could have included Snatched for 2017, that Amy yeah, Schumer movie. Transformers is damn near unwatchable. Unless you just like, unless you're in like directing school and you just like CGI shit, basically. Yeah. Then what do you think? The story's terrible. It's got Wahlberg trying to act when he can actually do it and doesn't give a fuck. So. Banner, because we got to move on. Which of those lists do you think sucks worse? I have to go last year, honestly. All right. I'll be the tiebreaker. I think 2017 was better, but great, great question, A. Clay. Our next question comes to us from Box Office Jack at Box Office Jack, who wants to know what movie do you love and you actually want either a sequel or a remake of. I'll go first, real quick, on this one. You're going to kind of see a theme here. Uh, Geiger and I were talking earlier today about comedies from the 80s that we think, or 80s or, or early 90s, that we think would be really fun to sort of redo in the modern context of how comedies are made or modern day. And I know this is a religious film for a lot of people and it's holy ground, but I think a modern day type Caddyshack movie would be cool to see. Like, you know, high school or college kids coming back for the summer, working at a, at a private golf course, to me just lends itself great to, to the lens of, of a comedic film. I would love to see that done. Geiger, what do you think? I'm going to go Days of Confused. I know it kind of had a sequel, Everybody Wants Some. Uh, none of the characters transferred over, I believe. The uh, seen Dave's confused a million times. I've seen everybody wants them twice, but I'm gonna go with that one because they have the '70s. Dave's confused. Everybody wants some as the '80s. So I, I need a I need like a night a class of '98, where it's like a high school movie. It wouldn't be called Dave's confused. It'd be called you know Champagne Supernova or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but back in Lee, Lee High, I, it's those movies are all about the music, man. So what? For a comedy, who are you trying to attract? Probably 25 to 38 year olds that want to go have a beer and watch a movie. Well, those most of those people were, you know, in high school in the 90s, or like us, were, you know, six, seven years old in the 90s. We could have Blink, we could have Eminem, we could have Britney Spears, you know, music just cranking the whole time. I mean, you could have McConaughey come back and still hit on high school chicks. He's a pretty good fucking looking dude still. I think that has an opportunity because. 2017 didn't have any comedies in it at all that I could even pick out and be like, man, that's a fucking good comedy. We need some better comedies. And I think getting the writer back for Days of Confused and doing a Class of 98 version would be fantastic. Banner, what about you? So we all know that I'm the, the Disney freak on this pod. And in recent light of them deciding, hey, we're not going to have any original content we're just going to do all our animated films uh, live action. I've decided to do a super dark live action Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, yes. Okay. I love it. Keep talking. So, <laughs> yeah, I just think that would be – it fits today's mold where Disney decides, hey, we're not going to have any original content. We're just going to regurgitate everything we have and pull on our heartstrings from all these kids that watch these movies as kids. There are all these people that watch these movies as kids, like they did Jungle Book, Lion King, Alice in Wonderland, Beauty and the Beast. They're doing Milan. Um, I'm sure there's a half a dozen other ones that I forgot that they're doing as well. I think Hunchback of Notre Dame would work. The only problem is you have to make it dark. You yeah. can't make, you can't it, make kinda... it dark enough. Just keep going. I'll yeah. let you know when you've hit the dark enough point. Exactly. I think that would be uh, really cool to see. I think they could do some really neat stuff with it. Great answer. I love that. That's awesome. All right, our last question comes from Isaac, at Isaac Twisty, who wants to know, best sequel with more than 10 years of difference between them, and the example he gave was Toy Story 2 to Toy Story 3. This was a tough question, Isaac, because a lot of these sequels that take so long suck dick when they come out. Yeah. Banner, what do you got? It's obvious, right? It's got to be Jurassic World. Which is probably the best one that I saw. Yeah. It's got to be. It's because you've got... You've got 13 years between it and Jurassic Park 3, which doesn't even really count because Jurassic World forgets that Jurassic Park 2 and 3 even happened. So you're looking at 22 years between the movies. The thing and that I liked about Jurassic World, I think we all knew they would eventually make another Jurassic Park. I kind of just assumed it would be a reboot, so I was glad that it connected to the first Jurassic Park. There's it's two 100%. movies I'll talk about at a bar, Hook and Jurassic World. Because those are the two movies Hollywood wasn't lazy as fuck and just rebooted. They actually added on to the story. Jurassic World is one of the most creative, great movies I've ever seen. It's one of me and my wife's favorites. 
I'll watch it all the time. It is so smart, so well done, so well directed, so well casted, so well scripted. It is a perfect movie for sure. Are either one of those yours, Geiger, or do you have a different one you want to talk about? No, it's not, Jeffrey. Thank you for asking, though. Uh, this was a pretty easy question for me, Creed. But then I did math and decided it came out nine years and one month apart from Rocky Balboa, <laughs> the movie that Jeff reminded me of. Because it's definitely, if you were ever a boxer, if you're 50 and just hit the weights, you can defeat the heavyweight champion two days. Easily. Two Nothing days. a montage can't fix. <laughs> so it took me, honestly, probably about 30, 40 minutes of thinking. I didn't really look through the internet because they don't always hold up. And I remember in January, Split. Split's a fantastic movie. You didn't think it was a sequel till the very end, but it's a sequel to Unbreakable, and they're making another one. And it basically brought M. Night Shyamalan back from the dead for a lot of people because his movie is the break. Not quite yet. <laughs> I don't know. Split was legit. He's got a pulse at least now. He's He's got a pulse. He needs one more, and then I'll say he's back. Okay, coming from the Fox guy where you go one for four every time. But, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, Split for me. Split. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna piss people off. Sorry, Isaac. I'm gonna basically cheat twice. So, The Force Awakens, huh? I know that's like yeah. super low hanging fruit. Fuck you, Jeff. That one sucks. Why don't you put it on the tee? <laughs> I still wouldn't be able to hit it. And then the other one that I had, which is not actually a sequel, it's a prequel, which totally changed the question. But I I really like Prometheus. In fact, it's my second favorite Alien movie. Um, although technically it is a prequel to Alien. Basically, I fail, but uh, you, you guys also had good answers, so people listening to the podcast got... That was a fantastic question, too. I had to think about that for a while. I had a day off from work today, so I just want you to know, I was at my pool drinking beer for 30 minutes trying to fucking think of an answer to that. That sounds miserable. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> One time we'll have to talk about some of the shittiest comedies that took over 10 years that they never should have made, because that uh, could be an interesting conversation. <laughs> All right, guys, we are the Bro4 Squad for Matt Geiger and the mad scientist Brian Banner. I'm Jeff Hornacek. Be sure to check us out on all of our platforms. Bro4Squad.com has all of our content. Has our world-famous squad blog and the Bro4Squad Hall of Fame, which you can maybe get in if you play your cards right. Like us on Facebook, Bro4Squad Podcast. Follow us on Twitter. Tweet at us, whatever you want, at Bro4Squad. And please subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. That's Bro4Squad, three words. Leave us an iTunes review. Thank you guys again. We will catch you on the flippity flop. And take your fucking trash can. Jeff, why don't they make another breakfast club?